Greetings everyone, my name is Donna Gilliland and I'm the founder of Moths Training, which stands for Microsoft Office Solutions. And I'm here to teach you quickly how to use Flash Fill. You know, there's so many things that we do with our data that require a formula to accomplish it, but there are some, some areas where we could use Flash Fill to accomplish a need with our data transforming without a formula. Here's a quick example before we dive in. This spreadsheet has names that are inconsistently cased. That happens when people are typing and they um, accidentally or in caps mode, just a number of things that causes inconsistency in typing. With this data, typically a person would use the proper function to convert improperly cased names. But with the feature flash fill, you won't have to do that in this case. Here's a quick example, and I've got several for you, and you'll also need to know what flash fill is and what the limitations are. So here's the first need. I need these properly cased. I don't want to use a formula. The first part is to type in the first name in proper case. From here, with a keyboard shortcut of Control E, I have flash fill. So can I use control E all the time for flash filling? Are there examples where control E won't give you what you need correctly? The answer is yes. You can't always use it and why not? And how does flash fill work with other types of data conversion needs? And that's what you're here to learn. So let's get started. And I will delete this information and we'll come back and do this one again. The first part is a, is a quick overview. I wanna start with the flash field benefits, then I'll come back to the limitations um, in full in a moment. But first, your flash field benefits, it's helpful for automating data transformations without the need for complex formulas. You just saw one done in a matter of maybe a, a second or two seconds at most uh, to take care of the inconsistent case. It also works, Flash Fill works by recognizing patterns in your data. It can quickly fill in data based upon your input. It's especially handy for tasks like splitting names, formatting dates, and cleaning up inconsistent data. And that's just the short list for Flash Fill. I want to cover a few Flash Fill limitations, and then I'll come back to the full list because I want us to go ahead and get into other ways you can use flash fill. Proximity is required. Information must be in a nearby location. For example, those names that were inconsistently cased, they uh, were in the left column and to the right, we were working to convert that information into proper case. So it's information that it was working from, the information it's working from was nearby. It was in a column to the left. Also know that flash fill values are static. And what I mean by that is a moment ago, I converted those names to proper case, but there was no formula involved. It was flash fills, uh, flash fill that we used. That would mean that if I went back, for example, and put in uh, where Emma Johnson's name is, and I were to put in um, Sam Smith, that Sam Smith wouldn't show up in that converted column because there's no back end formula. So keep that in mind, and I'll come back and finish this list in a moment. Let's move on with more use for uh, transforming your data using Flash Fill. In this one, I have a list of names, and they're all in one column. I would like to split it out so that Emma is in the first name column, Johnson is in the last name column. Again, typically, we use a formula to, to do that for us. But flash fill, this is one of those cases where flash fill will do the job for us. Here's how it works. The first thing that you'll need to do is type in the name, uh, the first name of the, uh, that's located in this column to the left. I've typed in Emma. Now press enter, of course, so you can get the data in. Now on this one, control E as a shortcut to data filling without having to go to the data ribbon and choosing flash fill. Control E will work because it's going to, the program Excel is going to look to the information from the left. Control E will, will work for us for the shortcut. And as you look, 
you can see that it has gone and extracted the first name of each name in that column to the left. And that flash fill icon pops up. They're known as smart tags when you see these different icons. And when you click the down arrow, it's giving you the option to undo the flash, accept the suggestions if you hadn't already, which we did with Control E. Just want you to know about the smart tag because we're going to need it in a little bit in another example. All right, here now, the last name. So I'm going to type in Johnson. Now bear in mind that Flashville is looking for the column to the left. And I'll type in Johnson. And now I'm going to attempt to use Control E. But I'm getting a message. It says, we looked at all the data next to your selection and didn't see a pattern for filling in values for you. And then it gives you some more information about to use flash fill in a couple of examples of the output you'd like to see. Uh, keep the active cell in the column you want filled in. And I'm not going to continue to read that to you because I know that you want to know, just give me the bottom line. How am I going to overcome this? And this is how you're going to overcome it. I'm going to go back to Johnson. And after I am on the name Johnson, I'm going to use the autofill feature to copy this down. Now, when I say autofill, if you are unfamiliar, every active cell has a small green square in the lower right. And its function is to either copy data when you double click it, or it has other functions by using that smart tag I brought to your attention. But here, going to the lower right corner of Johnson, you're looking for crosshaired symbol to appear. And at that time, you can either click and drag, that's the long way, or double click. But see, double clicking the autofill, Excel's always looking for what's in that cell. Is there a date in it? Is it a month? Is it a quarter? Um, like quarter one, two, et cetera. And in this case, when it's text, its behavior, default behavior is just to copy the text. But because I double click the autofill down at the bottom in that last entry is that smart tag. And that's what you need at this point because the default behavior is duplicate text if that's what you're autofilling. At that point, click the down arrow for your smart tag. It shows you that it's defaulting to copying cells. But the last option is for instructions to tell it to flash fill the information. And when you flash fill, then it reverts uh, over to the functionality of what flash fill is programmed to do. So now it has, through the process, recognized there is no Johnson in that left column. So it moves on over to the leftmost column and is looking for that pattern. And now I have it. Now I have it. So I've used it to split names and I didn't have a formula. Now, without my instruction, and you have it committed to memory, it's going to go way faster than it did in the explanation, because you'll know how to do it. The next one uh, was the one I did for you earlier, which was changing the case. And just by way of review, before I move you into the next one, which is an email address, I'm gonna type the first one, Emma, and enter. And because that's my only column to the left, now I can go back and use my shortcut, Control E, to auto uh, fill. And there are the, uh, first, uh, the first names. But remember, the, the issue for this one was, I also want the last names. And in that case, and I won't type it again because you saw that demonstrated a moment ago, I would type in Johnson in this cell and then copy it down and use the autofill smart tag to, to um, bring in the information correctly. Let's look, work with the email addresses. Many companies have a standard convention for email addresses. Many use the first name followed by a period followed by the last name, or they'll use a first initial followed by a dot followed by the last name and then the name of the company. So if your company uses the, one of those standard email naming conventions, and you've got all of these people in this new spreadsheet you're creating, and you don't want to have to type those email addresses, then you can use the flash field for that. In this case, we're going to go with uh, that the company uses the convention of first name, dot, last name. 
and Emma dot Johnson at abc.com and I enter and there's only one column to the left at this point you can use control E to have it go ahead and populate all the way down but if something was in the middle here and your email address was the third column and something else was in the second column then you would need to use your data fill uh, option as you learned earlier, copying it down and then using the smart tag to get to data fill. Also remember that data fill, uh, it's called flash fill. Whenever you're on the data ribbon, you do have in the data tools the option for flash fill so you can pre-select a range to choose flash fill. But if you're like me, shortcuts I prefer and that's where you're using your shortcuts control E where it can be utilized or you're using the smart tag options to click and choose to fill. All right, the next one is, this one is if I wanted to uh, extract the year of hire in this one, it's the names, the date of hire, but now I want, want to also just have a year for, for the higher, higher year. And I'll type in 2011 to get it started. And since the information is to the left, then I can use that shortcut of control E. And now it's gone and looked at each one and pulled out the year. I do encourage you to always look at the results from the flash filling to make certain that everything has been interpreted correctly. The last one for you is one for joining names. Now, you're probably used to using either join or using concatenate function to accomplish the joining of more than one name. But again, our goal here is if it's not needed and there isn't a way to do it with flash fill, then you're saving time. And in this one, uh, we're going to join names together. I'm gonna type in Emma Johnson and enter. Now I press control E and I'm getting that message again because it's looking to the left for, uh, for its information. So how am I going to overcome that? I'm going to go back to Emma Johnson, go to the lower right of Emma Johnson, crosshaired symbol, double click, and I'm getting duplicates because again, by way of reminder, double clicking data in autofill, if it's text, it's going to copy it. But I can come down to the autofill tag, click the down arrow and choose flash fill for it to reassess the information. I'm looking at it, through it, and I'm seeing that everything's correct. Everything's correct. So here in this short period of time, you've learned about what flash fill is, different ways you can use it. That's not an exhaustive list, but it's it's a list of the more common things. I want to remind you, I'm coming back to the main uh, page here. I want to remind you about those limitations. Proximity requirement, that these are static results. They are not driven by a back-end formula. So in that case, always remember that if anything you need to change with your data and you need it to be, be dynamic, then you do need to use a formula so that it will be dynamic and change when you change the supporting information. Those are important things for you to remember about the use of, of flash fill. Also, I would encourage you to go to my website at mosstraining.com and sign up for my newsletter. It's at the bottom of the page and it says it's called Sign Up to Keep Up. I hope you found this valuable. Please uh, Click subscribe so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. So that's it for now. And again, my name is Donna Gilliland, and I hope you found, hope you found this helpful. Bye for now.